So, I think uh, in my modularization in Python specifically, it might not be a new concept for most of you, but we will try to see the basic concept and we'll try to connect it with this week's project. I mean, it's a very, it's an important concept in every project and in every work, but why is it very important to introduce it in this week's project? We'll see that. <laughs> so, the first thing is it's a process of breaking down programming to smaller manageable modules or components. So why do we break down our program? So why are not they said why just we can just include everything and every work, every process in one document or uh, in one script. So why not? I mean what is that advantage of not doing that? The first one is the reusability. You know? Most of the time we might need to use specific or same type of uh, modularizations or methods or functions in different scenarios of the one project, right? So better than writing all the codes again and again, we're going to make them we're, we're going to write them in one place and we're going to interact with that specific folder every time we, we need that uh, specific, uh, specific purpose from the code. And the second one is easy maintenance. Okay, so if there is if there is a problem in that specific thing that the function or the module is doing, we know where to look for. We're not going. We're not supposed to go through every code and every uh, line of code in order to maintain the problem, right? We're to use to that specific folder and maintain the error. And it's also easy for collaboration since it's going to be easy to indicate. Uh, where it is. Like, I have imported this one from this folder, so everyone who needs to to see the clarification on that specific thing can go for that folder and see um, what has been done. And there's the scalability. So we can add any modules. I mean, there are so we're not on this case. We're not talking about the built-in modules, right? We're talking about the modules that we can include and write. So we can add and modify the. Uh, any type of modules that we see it's important or it's mandatory for that project. So the concept is it's in, what is it's independent units of code containing variables, functions, and class. So in the yeah, variable is the smallest word and the function in the class, we're going to contain the process that we want to be modularized. Then we're going to use that function or that class anytime we need that specific purpose. Uh, after writing the modules in a folder, we're going to import the import that to use, right? So using the import statement, we're going to include them on the specific place that we're that, that we working. And package management is some, somehow, you know, it's uh, above the above the scope of this tutorial. Yes, we can of, of course uh, uh, change our module into package, and we're, we can publish them in a Python package or PyPI uh, I mean package. So why do we use uh, modularization or like use modules? It's there are some best practices. The first one is single responsibility. If it's a, if you created one module. Since the, the point of creating the module is to minimize the, to, to make, you know, to create simplicity and to create a good organization. So why not to use just single responsibility per module? So each module should have single responsibility or purpose. And of course, the, main, the naming conventions, they should be named depending on the function or the thing or the purpose that they are doing. So that people can understand before even seeing the inside of the code, they can understand the purpose of the module by just seeing the title. And of course, the documentation says we're, we're creating the modules. We need to put some documentation or brief, briefication on what that uh, module is doing. And we can also taste, we can, it's a good practice to create a unit list for our modules. Okay, so yeah, it's just a little bit and uh, it's a uh, uh, familiar concept, I guess. So let's try to co co uh, connect this knowledge to our current project. So in this project, so you're going through the your task, and, <clears throat> and the first thing that the data that we're given is the uh, telecom data, data, right? So what are we going to do is uh, probably you're going to see the process of installing or um, yeah, calling or bringing the data from Postgres instead of just using the CSV format and things. So 
there are some tasks actually let's start from this one there are some tasks to be done right there are four tasks basically the user engagement analysis over overall user analysis and things right we expect you it's going to be a best practice actually we uh, so we expect you to do all the four analysis in four uh, different files of course you can do the whole analysis in one page but it's not going to be good practice or it's not going to be a good form of organization so it's better for you and also based for you to do all the four, four analysis differently but what is the point here we're going to use we're, we're going to use some uh, same type of uh, data for the four functions right for the four data or notebooks uh and there are also different types of things that we're going that we might need to use for every four analysis here i have just created the let's say the over uh, there is the user overview analysis but just it's not even the user overview analysis but let's see one of the some analysis that we might need and some functions some modules that we might need on all the four analysis okay so of course we're going to since we're going to we're using the same type of data we're going to use uh, 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 we're going to use a type of data. We're going to import the data from specific place. So in this part, I have just connected with the Postgres and uh, you're going to see on so the next tutorial how to connect with Postgres and things. And yeah, maybe you're going to use SQL Alchemy later, but I've just used uh, PsychoPG2. And so this is the connection. So what is the first step? Uh, before you know even analyzing doing EDA or querying the data and before doing anything we're going we should connect the, our database to our code and it should be easier to code and to give back, uh, yeah to code to ask to, to query and to get back to get our data back from the postgres so this <coughs> code is that like I have created Postgres, I've just included the code, the, uh, the code in the schema that you've seen that you are shared in the in my Postgres and make the connection to this. So you're going to see the, uh, those details later. But what I wanted you to see is we've just created a class called Postgres connection, right? What is the benefit of this? So as I told you before, we're going. It's better for us to create all the four analysis independently. So. Uh, we're not supposed to create or we're not supposed to import all the data uh, every time we need to make different type of analysis okay so let's say this is the first analysis that we want to do so i'm just supposed to uh, import uh, the postgres connection from this folder which is db connections or connection okay db connection is the folder name db connection and the connection of ui is this file that contains all the connections, okay, to connect to to query and to load the connection, everything, every detail things as written mm -hmm. here. After this, it's, this one is just a uh, trial. Yeah. yeah, but this one from this to this is how to create the connection, how to get the question, and how to get the query and how to get that. So yeah, the first thing we might need or the first type of modularization we might make is to. Uh, modularize the connection uh, with the database that we have and import that Postgres connection. So probably if you create a for notebook, you're going to use this uh, import method or this modularization for all the four analysis. Okay. So let's say what is the second. So um, this is from UTLs. Most this is just a permission that's why and more in most cases we put UTLs, we put uh, uh, modules and in UTLs, okay. So there is here we have the source folder and under the source folder have the user script py file. What do we have here? Let's see. So I've tried to include on this file that we some tasks or functions that we might want to use while doing all types of analysis. Okay. For example, we might uh, in on our EDA while analyzing our data, we might want to see uh, the missing value since like on the, we were seeing on the uh, on on uh, the previous lessons on EDA, how to make analysis and how to avoid uh, null values and things like that, right? So let's just determine. So we probably want to determine on all the four analyses, we're not going to use the same type of the data, right? We have different around 55 or 56 columns. So for some specific analysis, we might use five or six columns for the data, depending on the, what is expected from the analysis, okay? So, uh, so yeah we're going to we probably want to see the type of the i mean every column in different in the four on the four data like if we need to see uh 
one specific column in here. And on the second analysis, we might need to see the behavior of the other column. So we need to call, it's really a best practice to create uh, this kind of function so that we can just import this and we're going to change here the, uh, we're going to change only the column and we're going to see the characteristics of the column. So here we have just, uh, it will uh, identify the null values. And not only just identifying, it might be some somehow uh, vague just to see the number saying to decide whether this is this column have mostly null values or not. So we can put the uh, values in percentage. So uh, from what percent of the data or what percent of that column have null values so that we can decide whether to drop that column or to just continue with having that column. And what type of your data types are missing? So we just can include any type of uh, process or like uh, procedures that you see that's important for that specific data analysis. And so yeah, at the end, we're going to, uh, we're, it's going to be, yeah, we're going to see the output on the notebook, but we're going to see how much, how percent, what percentage of the value is null uh, and things like that, okay? And yeah. We're going to see the output there. And maybe the other thing we might need is, uh, since you have seen that some of the data in our uh, Chinese document have are given in uh, bytes and things. So you might need some of the data to be changed into megabytes in order to have convenient compilation between the data. Okay? So not only in one column, so it's all in many, I mean, not only in one uh, notebook, in one of the four, two or three of the four notebooks. So it's also, you might also, it's, it, it might also be important to create this function as a module, okay? And the other one is the outlier. So um, we have seen also, we have also seen about outliers. Uh, in order to, we have to make a suffix in outliers, right? The first one is we can change them to mean or mean the mean value. We can approximate them to the to some values or we can just remove some outliers. So it's also a best practice to include this the outlier. So in this, we are doing what we, what are, what we are doing is, we're just trying to uh, dis dis include or like remove data or yeah data which are which are above the ninety five percent of range. Okay, so like from we have those columns in range. If let's say that we have hundred data, so we're just trying to remove the last twenty five data if they or the data that are going to uh, that are lying into more than the more than ninety five. Okay or the last 5% of the data, since most of the data, so 95% of the data are lying on this uh, range of data. So uh, in here, if the if the, if that column, in that column, I trade into the column, in that column, if there is data which is greater than this percentile, we're going to remove that, and we're going to re return the new data, I mean, the new column, yeah, the new data frame with this column. And also, we can just remove the outliers. Here, we have used set score. It's also an option. You can use whatever method you see it's practical. And using set score, it's going to, you know, there's the, this threshold values, threshold values tree. So it's going to calculate how much the value of this specific value is far from uh, the mean. Okay. So if we can just make this four or five, depending on your data analysis. And it's what it's going to do is it's going to remove those values which are uh, above three, which in, which is far like which is far from three range from the mean value. Okay, so if it is not that close with the mean value, it's going to remove that or uh, it's going to include some values within this range. Okay, so yeah, those you should actually include more more uh, modules or more uh, functions here in order to use them as a module that you see the, the, there's going to be a video that's in, in the four notebooks or in the four analysis that you're going to make. So you're yeah, doing this here. We're going to, yeah, we just created a connection in this utils and so we could just uh, do the uh, analysis thing. So we have imported just the missing value table and then convert types to megabyte and you can import uh, any type of function that you've created there. And yeah, mm -hmm. here, uh, so after connection, creating this connection, the Postgres connection, we can include the, uh, the database name, the user. So yeah, this is also included on the, 
um, on the Postgres on the connection tutorial, which is going to be later. And yeah, the query select from Excel HDR data. This is the name of the data, or the name of the table in inside my database. So yeah, it's going to close the connection here. So running this just using this connection. So if if I was not using all the, 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 this uh, this class as a module. I was supposed to do all this process or, or yeah, this connection format here and every step uh, of analysis. But now I just called up uh, the class and imported this data. So we have just connected um, yeah, to, Postgre to Postgres scale data. And this is the data. But this is not the whole data, of course. It's 50, 55 columns, so it's not going to be visible here. So yeah, one of the functions that we've created is the missing value data inside our uh, module. Um, so yeah, we can see the missing value uh, table. So yeah, this is just the name of the function that we use here, right? So we're supposed we we can just uh, pass the data the, the data feed here, and it's going to yeah. This is the output that I have told you in the YouTube part. This amount of missing value, every column has this amount of missing value and calculating the same percent is very important. So 86%, 74%, it's probably, it's kind of large, right? So you're going to decide based on your um, analysis or based on, yeah, it's your decision. That 0.5%, it's somehow the data have, you know, no null values, you can conclude that. Also, we can use the, uh, convert bytes to make a bytes function here so that it if it is important to make as i as i told you before to make the, the analysis it is probably important if it is if we are going to use this specific column it's important to make it in the same format as the other so that it's going to be it's going to be uh reasonable and this here we're going to get yeah, it's the 55, the 56 columns are not displayed here. So that's why we can see the column code X. We've converted to column code, uh, column code X. This is the convert byte to make a byte uh, function. And this is the column that we're trying to change from the data field. If it's the name of the data. So yeah, this is the output. And just like this, we can continue importing our modules for the utils and the connection. and. Uh, yeah, probably from the utils and if it is the connection probably you should it's going to be best if you are going to create specific uh connection for that and the other in utils and uh, import your uh, modules and yeah that's going to make your analysis easier so can we have we have the we can have the discussion do you have any question Was it understandable or have you made the point? Not the point of modularization, but specifically how to relate it with this week's project. Okay. So yeah, I will be uh, I will be sharing you about the PPT and the uh, code in, in the technical document. So I can stop the recording, I guess. Thank you guys. Thank you.